Hello YouTube, it's Lion here with Hobbies of a Man, and today we're going to do another light novel review. Uh, but before we do that, I really want you guys to please like and subscribe if you like my content, and comment down below with, uh, you know, anything you guys want to tell me, anything that I can improve on, any way that <clears throat> I can do my videos better and stuff like that. It, all of that would be really helpful. And uh, I want to have 20 subscribers by the end of the month, so subscribing would really help me out because you know it would show me that people are liking my content that uh i'm growing as in as a channel and you know <laughs> it just made me feel that this is worth it which i mean <clears throat> i'm just doing it out of a hobby but it would be nice to you know have subscribers anyway yeah please like and subscribe <laughs> and yeah so today's uh review is going to focus on Infinite Dendogram Volume 1. Uh, this book is uh, written by Sakon Kaido. Uh, the illustrator is Taiki. <clears throat> and the publisher is J Novel Club. Its genres are isekai, fantasy, science fiction, and uh, it has game elements like, RP like lit RPG. It has an adaptation. <clears throat> and yeah, that's basically the rundown for that. Okay, before we start the premise, uh, let me explain how my reviews work again. So we look at five things. We look at plot, uh, characterization, world building, art, and fan service. Uh, the first three are the ones I base my rating score on. The other two are important for the sake of enjoyment. Anyway, let's start with the premise. So the premise here is that there's this video game that has taken over the world. Uh, it's a VR MMO, and it has infinite possibilities. E everything that could happen would happen in the video game, as long as the conditions are met. <laughs> and this game is so amazing and so realistic that people basically live in it exclusively and only leave in order to, you know, not die. So in order to sleep and eat and stuff. And... Uh, it's so realistic that it's very difficult to tell what players or what characters are NPCs and which are players. And there's a lot of lore behind it, how the players see the, uh, or the NPCs see the players as, uh, masters or, uh, essentially they're like demigods because, uh, they can't die. And if they do die, they, uh, come back in a few days while the NPCs die completely. This story focuses on Ray and his embryo, and an embryo is this uh, kind of helper tool uh, that's unique to each player. Uh, Ray apparently has a very special one called the Maiden type, which is, you know, uh, as the name suggests, a girl. Uh, this one specifically, like his, her name is Nemesis, like the goddess of uh, justice or retribution or something. Uh, she she's like this gothic Lolita character and um, she can turn into weapons kind of like a uh, soul leader or kind of like bleach um, how you know the some toes or like people or like have their own spirit or something or like a name um, although I think maybe the most uh, accurate comparison would be Spren that are bonded to uh, Radiance in uh, Stormlight Archive. Uh, you know how Kaladin and Syl are uh, friends and they have like complex emotions towards each other and Syl can adapt and change depending on the needs of Kaladin. That's kind of what a maiden embryo and her master are. Uh, yeah, good series. If you guys haven't read it, you should check out Stormlight Archive by Brandon Sanderson. Anyway, back to this. Uh, that was basically the premise. Uh, the evaluation uh, starts with the plot, so let's talk about that. Um, so Ray Starling, uh, he has a Japanese name, but he, ch he uh, changes it into English for video games and stuff, or like for online uh, situations. Uh, so he starts this video game that he wasn't able to start, uh, beforehand because he had to study for entrance exams for college, I think, maybe high school. And no, actually I think it's college because, uh, high school would make him really, really young. 
anyway, so he finally starts uh, and he's supposed to meet his brother who also plays a video game at the town center of uh, at the town square of the starter town, uh, which is the capital of one of the nations in the video game. And uh, he he goes in, he logs in, he meets this uh, thing called uh, this AI thing which is called Cheshire, I think, uh, which is, you know, a reference to Alice in Wonderland. And uh, it explains the whole mechanics of the video game and stuff, and uh, explains embryos. So the explanation for the magic system is kind of early on. And then uh, he goes and meets his brother, but on the way there, he uh, collides with this person who gives him a quest. And then uh, he meets his brother, they talk about it, they go on the quest, and um, while on the quest, uh, he encounters this uh, situation where he basically feels like he's gonna die, and because his emotions are so realistic and strong, they force his embryo to hatch before it's supposed to, because embryos take three in-game days to hatch, and he'd only been there for like half a day, and it hatched anyways. And, you know, that's when you can tell it's a special embryo and stuff. And then, uh, yeah, after that, it's, uh, you know, general isekai light novel stuff. He starts grinding levels. He understands more. He starts interacting with uh, the embryo. And, you know, you get character development from them. Uh, they meet other people, they start building a party, and then, uh, you know, the Ill, the bad guy of the arc is, uh, or the, um, the climax of the arc starts when uh, these people start um, player killing or KPing, and he's uh, scared at first, but he has to deal with it because, you know, it's a situation that happens in this video game, and uh, it ends basically with them uh figuring out why and then heading to a new town in order to continue to investigate and you know grow stronger and stuff and that's basically it, it the plot is really interesting it keeps you engaged uh it mixes itself well with the character building so like each part of the plot develops the character in a certain way uh which you know not all light novels do because a lot of night light novels are only uh, the plot line is more for the sake of the, of developing the comedy or, um, I'm just making you move forward. And yeah, so characterization, I th <laughs> think is the best part of this book, but you know, my whole, uh, conspiracy theory is that light novels are basically just character, um, books, which is true because like, I think light novels have like 70% dialogue compared to, you know, 50% or 30% in regular novels. So that means that you're mostly interacting through the characters. And so that it it makes sense that they would have specific voices and stuff. <laughs> anyway, so best part of the book, uh, the characters are really fun. Uh, there's Brother Bear, who is uh, Ray's brother, and he wears a bear costume. That's like, ba like, imagine a Spartan armor from Halo but it was shaped like a bear instead of like, uh, you know, whatever Spartans look like. And then uh, there's Ray and Nemesis, who are a, a very good duo. Uh, Nemesis is like this gothic lolly, but she, and she's also a tsundere. Uh, and Ray is a very, you know, normal protagonist, but he's blonde. So he's different from uh, a regular light novel protagonist. They're all like brunettes. Um, he's also very emotionally invested in the video game. Uh, it, it almost feels like he's in another world instead of just, you know, like, uh, what's it called? Playing a video game. And then, who else? There's, uh, <laughs> Rook and Babylon. So Rook is the guy that, uh, Ray starts a party with, and he, his job description, or his, like, uh, character trait or whatever, is a pimp. <laughs> and his, uh, ma embryo is a succubus. But he's underage, so all she can do is give massages. That's as far as her, like, seduction skill goes. Uh, but Rook is a pimp, and he's, like, super pretty. He's, like, a pretty boy. And one of his special skills is to, like, dazzle uh, his opponents into, like, uh, liking him because he's so attractive. 
And it's really funny just the byplay that, you know, occurs between Rook, Babylon, uh, Ray, and Nemesis. Because Ray and Nemesis are like, uh, uh, Ray's job is Paladin or Knight or something. And so uh, Nemesis is also very battle oriented. And they're just like confused about this like crazy funky kid that's a pimp. <laughs> and it's just really funny. Uh, they're all really flushed out well enough, or at least uh, the information necessary for them to be interesting is there. And yeah, that's uh, basically it for characterization. World building is also amazing. Uh, you go all in with the video game aesthetic, you know, everyone's always talking about levels, about how they have to upgrade their skills. Uh, there's a lot of... Uh, resource management that goes into it kind of uh it, it feels very much like a western style high fantasy or science fiction novel where you know you're bombarded with information about this world that you don't know and would never know otherwise <clears throat> but it, because it's a light novel it's done in a way that's uh less hard hitting if that makes any sense um, the lore is de deep and rich, and it's uh, hinted throughout the novel, but it's never, you know, outright spoken to you. So, you know, that's really good. I really enjoy that aspect. Um, and yeah, that's basically it. I, I think this is the... Okay, I say this every time I review one, but this is probably the best light novel I've read. <clears throat> or every time I talk about them on like a haul or something. This is definitely the best light novel I've read so far. The only one that comes close to it is probably Log Horizon, uh, the vol volume one. But everything else, uh, this is by far the better one. And that's basically it for that section. Um, the art is super amazing. It's very uh, pretty if you look at it. It's like, it's not psychedelic, but it's very colorful and... Uh, has this like hint of unfinishedness to it, but still being rather, you know, polished. It's really odd. Uh, that's Embryo, or that's uh, Rook's Embryo Babylon. And this one's Nemesis. And yeah, um, here, let's see if there's another one. Here, this is a bit more uh, crazy. It's so good. I really love the coloring on them. Um, oh, that's basically it. There you go, that's the cover again. Uh, it's really nice, like the, the edges, the colors around them are, you know, a landscape. They, they're not just like random colors, dots of color all around. It's really nice. I really, really like it. Um, I don't, I haven't seen the anime, so I don't know how, um, the anime looks compared to this, but probably very different, so... That's a thing, <laughs> if that bothers y'all. Uh, and the fan service here is very minimal. I can't really think of any fan service off the top of my head. Uh, although Rook's character probably is gonna, you know, cause some later on, but nothing that I can truly, like, clearly remember. And then, uh, yeah, that's basically it. My review is a five out of uh, five or a 10 out of 10. Um, like I said, this is the best light novel I've read so far. If you wanna get into light novels and you're a big fan of uh, lit uh, science fiction, this would probably be a good one to get into. Um, yeah, it's like, I wouldn't compare it to SAO because SAO is very um, uh, basic, I guess. This is a lot more complex than that. So I wouldn't compare it to SAO. And I can't really think of anything that's a similar title. But yeah. Mm. What else? Oh, the physical copies are about this size, which is a small, uh, essentially like a really wide um, mass market paperback. I have one, I just don't wanna get up and get it. Um, what's it called? It's a lot more comfortable to read in this size, I think, than the regular light novels. So that might be better. Um, I picked this up because of uh, Justice Star Stone. I was listening to his podcast and, you know, <laughs> basically they only talk about really good light novels. So 
I was listening to this one and Bio Gundam was talking about how everything was like crazy and you know everything felt so infinite and I was like interested in that and that's basically what uh got me to read this and so yeah that's basically yes uh, basically it I definitely recommend it uh you guys should check it out and that's that thank you guys see you later